Good afternoon, welcome to Rundle Gaming. So we're going to be doing another video. This one is on a game called Trains. Uh, the It's kind of a mixture of um, Take a Ride meets Dominion. I guess would be a good uh, explanation of the mixes between the two. Uh, at the start of the game, each person is going to get a color. You have one of four colors here, either red, blue, uh, green, or yellow. In this case, we're going to have it yellow versus blue. Just for demonstration purposes and to show you how to play the actual game itself, which is a very easy game all in all. Um, so at the start of the game, each player is going to basically take one of their cubes. Uh, these cubes basically represent a railroad. Uh, and they're going to place it down on some square to start out with. So we'll say this person started here, this person started here. You cannot start on a river, and you cannot start on a numbered location. Um, so pretty much how the game itself works is that uh, as you start to build different locations uh, and establish uh, the rail stations here, they um, yeah, so like you'll have these different uh, stations themselves, and they'll give you different victory points equal to what you uh, place on that location, and we'll kind of give you some uh, information. Uh, as we play through. So to start out with, it's going to be similar to Dominion in that you start with a deck of preset cards. And that's going to be seven normal trains, uh, which these only are in the deck itself, or in the box itself. And then you get two lay rails, which anytime you play one of those, you lay down another railroad. And then a station expansion, you get one of those. So you can basically put out one of these little stations with that card. So we're going to go ahead and draw five. In the particular case of this round, we have four normal trains and then one lay rails. Now how this is actually going to work is let's say that the player on my left here is going to be yellow. So what they can do is they can go ahead and lay a rail on one of the locations here. Now you're going to have a different, you're going to have a reference start here at the uh, back of the, the book itself, which is pretty useful. And what it's going to do is kind of give you uh, information on what each of these different locations will cost you uh, money wise in order to uh, either buy something or to, because you can do as many buys as you want. So you can buy as many cards as you want as long as you can afford it. You can also buy as many rails as long as you have cards to support it. You can also do any number of stations as long as you have cards to do so as well. So if you're wanting to lay down a railroad, so let's say if I wanted to build this railroad, uh, these uh, black and yellow lined ones here mean that you cannot expand from here to over here, uh, etc. So you cannot go from this city to this city. You have to pretty much like go here, then here, or here, then here. So to kind of give you some additional ideas what uh, kind of cost will come up. If it's a regular field like these, it's not going to cost you anything else. It'll just be zero cost. So if I want to delay this rail, I can do that here and not pay any money to do so. Uh, actually, let's give ourselves a little bit better location just for explanation purposes. But let's say we're here. So if I go here, it's going to cost me zero. So that will be free. Now, if I'm building into a river, uh, that'll cost me an additional one. So if I want to build, like, say, here, it's going to cost me one money to do so. So this rail card plus one gold. Uh, if I wanted to build into a mountain, so the darker green here, it kind of looks like a wooded area, but those will cost you an additional two. Let's say I've already built here. Uh, so let's say this was a few turns later and I wanted to expand into a city. Uh, so it's going to be one plus the number of stations on that location. So there's no stations here right now. So let's say if I wanted to build here, it will cost me one. If I wanted to build here, it would cost me one. But let's say if Blue had already been here earlier, he had already built up two stations. Then uh, if I try to build into it now, it's going to be one plus the number of stations, so it will cost me a minimum of three 
and then there's some other factors because he's already here which we'll go over as well so as you can see it's pretty much so like if there's stations there already and you try to build into it it's going to cost you additional money as well uh, so that's the different locations um, and another thing too is if you try to build into one of these numbers let's say you were to build into a, these are called remote locations uh, it'll be whatever the number is so if I build into here it will cost me four money to do so. Because let's say if I already had one in the mountains here and I decide to build here, it'll cost me four money plus LA rails. It will also cost me an additional one for any other player at a location. So let's say blue and red were both playing this game. If I were to build into the city since there's already two here, it will cost me two additional. And then another one because of the city itself. So it ended up being three because it's one plus number of stations, plus one for red, plus one for blue, three total. If there are already two stations here, it'll be one, two, three because of stations, four because of red, five because of blue, so five total. So as you can see, it, it will quickly add up as you start to expand into other people's territory. Another thing is you cannot build in sea spaces. So you cannot build out into the ocean. It's just one of those things they limit you on. So there will be a couple different things. So that's uh, the cost for rail. Now if I were to have drawn a station expansion, uh, I could drop one of these stations as long as I'm in a city that uh, has some that are available. Now to kind of go over the board a little bit further here, is like this city here can only have one station in it. So if I were to build a station here, now you have to have a rail there to begin with. So let's say if I did build over here. If I build a station there, there cannot be any more stations built there in the future. One is the max, and that's it. If I were to build one here, if I were to build another one later, I can do so. But I cannot go to three because there's only two at this location. In this particular one, you can go up to three. So some of these can go up to one, some can go up to two, some can go up to three. It just depends on what city you're currently in. You're going to get some victory points based on the number of actual stations. As I mentioned with the different stations here. So if you were to build um, an actual station at this location. Now for the very first one, you're going to get two victory points. And this is going to come into play as soon as you build it. Because uh, as you can see, these are all going to be the same color, so there's no actual differentiating who built it later in the game. So let's say if I were to uh, build this one here, I'll get two victory points. So in this case, you'd get two victory points because you built uh, a station there. Let's say if I were to build another station, you get four additional victory points. So one, two, three, four. So you would have went up to six. However, let's say if you were in this big city here, and you were to build a third one, you'll get an additional eight victory points on top of that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, fourteen. And this is where it's going to be really useful to get into some of these bigger cities and start building a lot more stations down. And that's why I said it's a very, very simplistic game uh, overall. I mean, there is strategy involved with it, but for the most part, it's not that overly difficult. Now, another thing to take into consideration as well is like in Dominion you have you know bad cards that can also end up in your deck. In this particular case it's called waste. Whenever you build anything usually it'll have a waste symbol. I don't know why they use a the recycle symbol but they use a recycle symbol on here. So recycle is the equivalent of waste. So if you were to build say a station you get one of these cards automatically it goes to your deck. Uh, so what this card itself does is it cannot be bought and it has no actual ability. So let's say if I were to build one rail and one station for the round, I'll end up with two of these. Now these will keep uh, going into your deck each time you build stuff. So the more and more waste you have, the more your deck's going to become inefficient. So then you have to find stuff that kind of gets rid of waste as well. Um, it's like, for example, if you were to build skyscrapers, these are basically your victory point cards from the other game. Because uh, they have victory point values on the bottom left. 
So at the end of the game, you'll get four victory points here, two for this, and one for this. However, if you build it, you also get an additional waste. Now these can be quickly add up on your deck, and then it keeps um, giving you problems as well. Now there are cards you can buy that kind of help you with that. For example, with this one, you do not gain uh, any waste cards this turn. So if I were to play this dump site, I will not gain any waste cards whenever I buy stuff, whenever I play stuff. Uh, it won't hurt me for that. Uh, in this particular circumstance, there's not a lot of stuff. In this case, there's a freight train. Return any number of waste cards from your hand to the waste deck. Gain one gold for each waste you return. So a freight train might be a good way of getting rid of a lot of waste as well. So if you play that, you can get rid of a bunch of waste, get some gold back for that. And so it kind of helps you uh, manipulate it a little bit to where it's not going to completely cripple you over the course of time. Uh, in this particular game, it does have a lot more similarities to Dominion in that once four of these decks are completely exhausted, the game will end. So that's one way that the game ends. The second way the game ends is any player has used up all their rail tokens, because normally you'll split these colored ones, the little color cubes, and if you run out of color cubes, the game will end. If you run out of these stations, which is used up by everybody because anytime anyone uses a station they put on the board and they use up one of these. Once those are all gone the game will also end. Uh, as far as the four decks being exhausted uh, waste does not get included in this so if you were to use up your entire waste deck that is not going to affect your count of four decks. So let's say if this deck was entirely used and you were to use up three of these other ones that does not trigger the four. So that's something to consider as well. Uh, once the game itself is done, it's just pretty much based on whoever has the most victory points. If it's tied, it goes to the player that has the most rails on the board. If it's still tied at that point, then it's a shared victory. Which at that point you may as well just roll off or something, because, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I mean that's the just the game itself. It's a very very simplistic game. I won't say there's a, a great deal of strategy in it because it kind of depends on what you draw and for the most part there's not a lot of big choices because you don't choose between do I want to play this normal train or do I want to do a station expansion. You play every card in your hand if you choose. I think most of the strategy depends on what's on the board itself and what you buy in order to uh, build your hand. But even that still has its limitations as far as what you'll do with it. Uh, so I won't say that there's a great deal, uh, but it's very good for like your uh, casual players that may not be huge into board games. This is kind of um, you know going from Ticket to Ride into something else. For example, I think uh, Dominion and Ticket to Ride are both kind of like gateway games. This kind of meshes the two together a little bit. Because you'll see a lot of similarities of both of them. Because like in Ticket to Ride, you're kind of building railroads to get victory points. In Dominion, it's more about the uh, deck building aspect of the game itself. So, um, Otherwise, this is the game Trains. Um, hope you've enjoyed the video. Definitely watch for future videos. We'll have some more being posted in the near future. Thank you for watching Run Gaming, and you have a good day.